Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about ashes and bases, part one, Bronsted Lowry theory. This is related to two learning objectives from the College Board. You may want to pause the video and read it carefully. There are six strong acids that we need to remember. They are hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroidic, perchloric, sulfuric, and nitric acids. They ionize completely in water and form ions. They are strong electrolytes. Uh, when we write the equation, we can put hydrochloric acid reacting with water to form hydronium ion and the chloride ion. Or we can simplify it as hydrochloric acid ionizes to form hydrogen ion and chloride ion. That means the hydronium ion can be replaced by the hydrogen ion. They mean the same thing. Now, if we look at the uh, pictures of the beakers, we find that the hydronium and chloride ions are floating around in the beaker. All the molecules have dissociated and equilibrium lies far to the right. The initial concentration of hydrochloric acid is therefore equal to the concentration of the hydronium ions. The weak acids. Typically these are acidic acid, hydrofluoric acid, nitrous acid, uh, chlorous acid, hypochlorous acid, hydrocyanic acid, oxalic acid, carbonic acid, sulfuric acid, and phosphoric acid. They ionize partially in water, forming a few ions. Therefore, it is an equilibrium situation. Notice that we have a red arrow going forward and in the reverse manner. There are very few ions formed. They have a they are weak electrolyte. Uh, a lot of the molecules remain unionized. You can see from the beakers, a lot of HF molecules still there with very few fluoride and hydronium ions formed. Equilibrium lies far to the left. The initial concentration of hydrofluoric acid is greater than the hydronium ion concentration formed. Strong bases. If we look at group 1, we have lithium, sodium, and potassium hydroxide. And group 2, we have calcium, strontium, and barium hydroxide. And when we write the equation, sodium hydroxide ionizes completely to form sodium ion and hydroxide ions. There are some group 2 hydroxide, they are only slightly soluble in water, but when they dissolve, 100% is ionized for that portion. Equilibrium lies far to the right, you can see there's only sodium and hydroxide ions floating around in the beaker. And initial concentration of sodium hydroxide is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. Now, with re regard to the weak bases, we have ammonia, NH3, or we have the amines like methylamine and ethylamine with the NH2 group in there, and we have the pyridine. These are typically weak bases. They react with water to form hydroxide ion. Therefore, when we write the equation, we must put the water in there. Ammonia in water forms ammonium and hydroxide ions, and we use the um, forward and reverse arrow represented by the red arrow. This is at equilibrium. Only small percentages would ionize. Majority of the molecules remain unionized. Equilibrium lies far to the left. And the initial concentration of ammonia is much greater than the hydroxide ion concentration as represented by the picture here. A lot of ammonia molecules still remain unionized. The bronsted lowry theory is regarding proton transfer. Here we have a reaction between HA and B to form A- and HB+. Now the acid are the proton donors, represented by HA in terms of donating a proton, the hydrogen ion, to become the conjugate acid, uh, sorry, conjugate base A minus. Now the bases are proton acceptors. It's represented by B, where it would accept the proton, hydrogen ion, because it has non-bonding electron pair to bond to H plus to become a conjugate acid HB plus. And note that the conjugate acid base pair only differs by a proton. The first example is the ionization of acetic acid in water to form acetate ion and hydronium ion. Now here, uh, let's pay attention to the structural diagram. 
Here, the acidic acid is donating the proton to a water, and afterwards, it forms the conjugate base of acetate ion with a minus one charge. And the water is acting as a base in terms of accepting a proton from the acidic acid to form the conjugate acid hydronium ion. So when we draw the Lewis dot structure, you take away the um, acid proton from acidic acid, attach it to the water to form hydronium ion, and make sure you account for all the lone pair electrons and add the charges to the ions formed. Another example, ammonium water forming ammonium and hydroxide ion. Uh, here is the uh, diagram of ammonia with a lone pair electron. Uh, it is accepting the proton uh, from the water, so uh, it is the uh, base, and then it forms the ammonium ion, which is the conjugate acid. And water is now acting as an acid as it's donating the proton to NH3 to become the conjugate base OH-. Again, when you draw the Lewis diagram, please make sure that you have all the dots and bonds accounted for and the charges of the ions. The strength of bronsted lowry acids and conjugate bases are inversely related. For example, uh, the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. Take hydrochloric acid. The conjugate base is chloride, which has a weaker attraction for the hydrogen ion. Therefore, the reaction goes forward, and equilibrium constant is greater than 1. Now, in a weak acid such as HF, the conjugate base is F-. It has a stronger attraction for the hydrogen ion. Therefore, the reverse reaction will occur to a large extent, and the uh, equilibrium constant will be less than 1. Try practice problem number one. Predict products and determine the acid, base, conjugate acid, and conjugate base for the following. Here is HF and ammonia, and C2H5NH plus and water, hydronium ion and cyanide ion, and sulfurous acid and hydroxide ion. You may want to pause the video and see if you can arrange for the transfer of the proton and identify the conjugate acid-base pair. Now the following slide shows you the answers. The first one, we have uh, F minus ion form, which is a conjugate base of HF, and then we have ammonium ion form, which is a conjugate acid of ammonia. The second one, we have C2H5 NH form, which is the conjugate base of the C2H5 NH plus, and then we have the hydronium ion form, which is a conjugate acid of the water base. This one here, we have water formed, which is a conjugate base of hydronium ion, and we have HCN formed, which is a conjugate acid of CN minus. And lastly, we have HSO3 minus one ion formed, which is a conjugate base of the sulfurous acid, and then we have water formed, which is a conjugate acid of the base OH minus. Practice problem number two. Give the formula for the conjugate acid of the following species. Now, as you know, the conjugate acid would acquire a proton, so afterwards we have H2PO4 minus, HSO3 minus, and H3O plus. Make sure that you account for the charges. Once you add the proton, the charge of the ion is reduced uh, by one, by negative one. Give the formula for the conjugate base of HS minus, NH4 plus, and water. And here, when we talk about conjugate base, we're removing the proton. So we have now sulfide 2 minus ion, ammonia, and hydroxide ions formed. To summarize what we have learned today, first we learned the theory of bronsted lowry acid base based on the proton hydrogen ion transfer. Secondly, we learned that conjugate acid base pair they differ by a proton. Thirdly, we learned the use of particulate drawings to represent the ionization or dissociation of strong versus weak acids and bases in water. And finally, we learned that the relative strengths of conjugate acid-base pair in terms of their attraction for the proton and their impact on the equilibrium direction. I hope that you found the um, video helpful to you. From the team of MLCA, we'd like to thank you for watching our video and hope to see you again next time.